Hi, I'm Dr. Hansa Bhargava, Medical Editor for Medscape and WebMD. And today we're going to talk about hand sanitizers. It seems that many of our patients are using hand sanitizers and wipes daily. They're looking for a convenient way to kill bacteria and germs when soap and water is not available, or even when it is. But are hand sanitizers as helpful as hand washing? And is there harm? Let's take a look. The FDA wants to be sure and recently issued a proposal requesting manufacturers to conduct additional scientific testing just to make sure there are no unknown safety issues. Most of these sanitizers contain three active ingredients, isopropyl alcohol, benzyl alkalonium chloride, and 90% contain either ethanol or ethyl alcohol. While they have proven effective in killing microbes, there's never been a comprehensive study evaluating their safety. One question I've been asked by patients is, can passive alcohol absorption through the skin occur? Hand sanitizers work best when the solution remains on the skin and dries naturally without being wiped or washed off. But what's the long-term effect of that residue and could it be absorbed, especially for children? In the past, researchers with the French School of Public Health also raised concerns over whether intensive use of hand sanitizers, such as in healthcare settings, could lead to passive alcoholization. Since the absorbed al alcohols are highly water-soluble, there is some concern about that component being rapidly distributed to vascular organs such as the brain and liver. Fortunately, in October of 2015, a meta-analysis concluded that evidence to date demonstrates no definitive findings of toxicity. What about children? Are these products safe for them? Could they get alcohol poisoning? Several manufacturers have added flavors such as strawberry, grape, and even bacon, which has unfortunately become an enticement for children. The alcohol level in hand sanitizer can range from 45 to 95 percent, which is very dangerous, especially if ingested. Sadly, poison control centers across the U.S. have reported that the number of cases of children under the age of 12 ingesting sanitizer have quadrupled in the past few years. In fact, there were over 15,000 exposures reported in 2015. Parents should be made aware that different flavors and smells in hand sanitizers can lead the kids not to just using them, but eating them too. Lastly, we've talked about safety, but what about efficacy? What your patients may not know is that hand sanitizers are not as effective against some of the most virulent inf infections out there. For example, I'm going to do that one again. I'm sorry, Joe. No Tripping over too many words. Lastly, we've talked about safety, but what about efficacy? What your patients may not know is that hand sanitizers are not as effective against some of the most virulent infections out there, for example, norovirus. One study has even reported limited effectiveness against influenza B. In fact, the CDC explicitly recommends hand hygiene with soap and water as the first way to prevent infections before the use of hand sanitizers for the average person. If there's no running water, Hand sanitizers should have at least 60% alcohol to reduce the amount of germs. So what does the FDA want to do? Although the FDA's proposed rule does not require any consumer products to be removed right now from the market, it does require manufacturers who want to continue marketing these products to provide the FDA with additional data on the active ingredient's safety and effectiveness, including data to evaluate absorption. Hand sanitizers are convenient and easy to use, but our patients should know that the most effective cleansing still comes from good old-fashioned soap and water.